Tanaka, Kola Kanaka, Masoma Mesa Kaltanyane, Komarak Asa Escochompe. It hardly seems possible that so much could have happened in the few years since I came to Bolivia. So many things. Problems, changes, rewards, things learned, sometimes the hard way. I remember the day Father Joe came to pick me up at the airport and drive me to my new parish. I had so many big plans then, all the things I was going to do. What do you think, Jim? That's your parish. Fantastic. Final words of advice? I'd say just listen. How's that? Gee, I tell you, Jim. Our first superior, Father Sebastian, he says, Joe, for your first year, just keep your eyes and your ears open and your mouth shut. <laughs> Fair enough. Although, do you think he meant it to be taken literally? I mean, the basic reason we're here is to share what we have with these people, both from the gospel and our know-how. And uh, from the condition of this road and what you've told me about the people, I'd say they could use a bit of both, wouldn't you say? During that first year, I think I did more running around than anything else. In fact, I almost ran myself into the ground. I was so determined to get things done, to organize the people. Administering the sacraments was the role of the missionary, along with teaching them all that we've learned over the years. It worked in my parish in the States, so why shouldn't it work here? Vente, siéntete, no moleste. Momentito, lo puedo agricular. 
It was hard to accept that things weren't working. Hard when I couldn't see any results for all my work. So it wasn't long before it occurred to me, is all this really changing anyone? Or are people just doing certain things because I asked them to, without any real commitment? I was starting to see gaps between our ways of doing things and where these people were. It wasn't long after that I said a mass that I'll never forget. At the time, I never dreamed of what it would eventually lead to. It was a mass for an older man of the congregation who had died some time before, murdered at that, in some kind of family brawl. Entonces, Jesús entró en un barco, pasó al otro lado del lago, y llegó a su propio pueblo. Allí le llevaron un hombre que estaba paralítico, acostado sobre una comilla. Cuando Jesús vio la fe que ellos tenían, lo dijo al enfermo. Anímate, hijo, tus pecados quedan perdonados. Mi padre. Por favor, aquí no. Pero padre, si te rezas a mí, es para, para mi padre. Claro, la misa es para su padre, pero no necesitamos esto. Su alma, padrecito, su alma. I couldn't believe it. An old skull. You bend over backwards to understand, implement new ideas. And these pagan customs still persist. Maybe to you they're pagan, but not to them. What do you mean? It was pagan. Just like some of the goings-on at these so-called fiestas they have. But I still think you're trying to make them into Americans. I mean, North Americans. If they act like us, progress. If they don't, then we've got problems. But look at the growing role of the catechists, and the radio station, and the co-ops. Not to mention the, the road that we're building. It's opening up areas that have been totally cut off and in the process, giving a learning experience to the people. Well, I buy that. The trouble with it is that it's mostly our ideas and mostly run by us. Well, what's your solution then? You've been working here as a sister for longer than I've been here. Jim, I don't have any solutions for these people. The only thing that I can possibly do is to share the gospel with them and encourage them and ask them questions so that hopefully they'll find their own solutions for their own lives. Sometimes it might be something that we might not agree with. You really think it's that simple? Well, for me it is now. When I came down 10 years ago, I was going to give them all my accumulated wisdom. But instead, you know, they filled me so much and given me so much more than I could possibly have given them. Dear Father Provincial, I've put off writing this letter for as long as I could, but now I don't think I can postpone it any longer. You know from my previous letters that I've had difficulties working here. Lately, 
I'm even questioning some of my original intentions in coming here. So I'm asking your permission to return to the States for a while to think things over. The hardest thing will be to tell the people who've been so helpful and supportive of me that I'm leaving. Especially Pedro, the catechist here who is a real leader in the community and spiritual life of the people. I just hope I can make him understand and that he won't feel I've deserted him and left him with all the problems. Pedro! It's con mucho dolor que me voy. Pienso que... pues que tú tendrás que hacer la lucha y hacer todo lo que se necesita. Sí, padre. No quiero que, que se vayan, padre. Eh, yo haré como lo que puedo. Eh, contigo podemos andar bien, padre. Disculpe, padre. No me puede acompañar, mi padre. ¿Dónde? ¿Para qué? Es que mi cuñada está muriendo. Antes que muera, no me puede visitar mi padre. Ya, vamos. Suban nomás. Los Tenemos prisa, no hay tiempo. Pero padre, son nuestros amigos, pues. No sé por qué programas. Estos vehículos no son para tanta gente. Ahora, ¿cómo vamos a llegar? Está en esa lomita nomás es. Natalio, 
Mas está bem? Sim, está bem. 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 Yo le he perdonado, padre. Usted también tiene que perdonarle, padre. As we walked back that morning, I began to see things very differently. I mean, some of the things I'd been working so hard to bring these people were already here, and perhaps had been for longer than I'd care to admit. It was then that it came back to me. Something an old Bolivian had said not long after I came down here. We were discussing the role of missionaries and he said, you came down here with a full chalice, overflowing. Instead, you should have come with an empty cup. We would have filled it for you. What am I still doing here in Bolivia? 
I guess it has something to do with what Sister Claire said that day about simply presenting the gospel, then asking questions to help people find their own solutions. Something to do with the need to connect the Latin American church to the worldwide church. And it's funny. What I'm doing and the way the Indians here taught us to do it is now official church policy. There is a life and a special vitality in the church and the community here. You get the feeling the church is moving, perhaps more than in the States. And who knows, maybe someday Latin America will be sending missionaries to the United States. <laughs>